that she hated the idea of the current challenge to the very bottom of his heart. He already knew how Hayato would react anyway. He had seen it times and times again before, whenever he just about winced under a touch, the way Hayato's eyes filled with concern and not so well hidden sadness. There was no way he would bring it up just for some stupid challenge, not after the previous one and all the recent hospital trips. He had worried Hayato enough already. Why do they always have to come up with such horrible challenges? It almost feels like they love to be in pain. Why can't they just be content? A heavy sigh escaped his mouth, his hand subconsciously clenching around the mug he held. Everything felt a little strange now that Hayato brought up kids. It very much shifted Taichi's view of their life together, and even though Hayato didn't stop reassuring him in one way or another that he cared about now, Taichi still felt horrible for being the only obstacle standing between Hayato and his ideal future. He even caught himself a few times hearing what was uncomfortably close to his father's voice confirming his worries, telling him that all was his fault from Hayato's injury to the shadows recently occasionally present on his face. Daichi always shooed those voices away, but he couldn't really unhear the words. And the longer he sat at home alone with his thoughts, the more difficult it was to chase them away. He forced himself to take a deep breath before the knot in his chest could start to suffocate him again, and took a few sips of the tea Hayato swore was great for relieving anxiety. Though, the best anxiety relief he knew was still nowhere to be seen. How long is he going to be locked in there? His eyes strayed to the closed door of their office. It had been about two hours since Hayato came home, looking less than pleased with something. He still gave Taichi the usual hug, but there was so much rush in it, Taichi wasn't sure if it wasn't just an automated gesture. But before he could ask, Hayato excused himself into the office without another word, leaving Taichi standing confused in the middle of the living room. And now, here he was, unsure what to do other than wait and hope it wasn't anything serious. He will tell me eventually if it's something bad. He will. A loud bang made him jump and almost spilled the tea over his hands. His flight response kicked in immediately sending his heart into his throat. A mere second later, the door flung open as Hayato stormed out, his face scrunched with what Taichi could only describe as fury. Haya? Chills running down his spine, his voice got caught in his throat when Hayato stopped and clenched his hands into fists. It's fine. Taichi instinctively pulled away, the sharp edge in Hayato's voice making him shiver. His eyes darted over Hayato in search of the signs signaling danger he knew all too well before he caught himself. This was Hayato in front of him. His fiance, Not someone he would be in any danger from. And yet, with all that was happening lately, he couldn't keep the tremble from his voice when he spoke up. You don't look fine. Yeah, because I'm not. I'm pissed. He marched towards the bedroom, almost kicking the door open before he disappeared into the room. Against his better judgment, Taichi hesitantly got up and followed, wincing when more noise reached his ears. Hundreds of different scenarios flashed through his mind, one worse than the other. The voice returned in full force, no less than yelling at him that he was at fault once again, making Hayato lose his temper. A tiny bit of relief eased the tension in his chest when he entered the bedroom and couldn't see any luggage being packed. Yet, Hayato still looked furious, pacing around the room, opening and closing various drawers as if looking for something. Can... can I help? He flinched when yet another drawer got slammed shut, the urge to back away getting much stronger. It's fine, you don't have to worry. I do have to worry. This isn't like you. You've never... His breath hitched, his arms instinctively shooting up to protect his head when Hayato slammed his hands into the dresser. For a few seconds, silence settled in the room, interrupted only by Taichi's ragged breathing. Of course it was his fault. Why else would Hayato react like this? He had to do something to make him angry. It was his fault. Tai. 
a tiny whimper left Taichi's mouth. He kept his eyes buried into the floor, too afraid to look up. The warm, calloused hands took a gentle hold of his own, leading them away from his head. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Please don't be scared. Taking a shaky breath, Taichi raised his eyes, still half ready to get berated or worse. But there was no anger nor a resentment in Hayato's expression. There, it's okay. I won't hurt you, I swear. I'm sorry, love. I'm so sorry. Taichi allowed himself a steadying breath, some of the warmth from Hayato's hand seeping into his skin. Are you mad at me? A brief flash of pain crossed Hayato's face. No, of course not. It's not your fault, at all. I'm sorry I made you think like that again. Then, what happened? Hayato sighed and gently tucked Taichi forward, only wrapping his arms around him when Taichi stepped closer on his own. I spoke with your father. Taichi froze. Y you He had to find my number somehow and called today, yapping something about sending me a check if I break the engagement with you. What? Yeah. He said I should be glad he's offering so much since our relationship isn't worth anything and I wouldn't be able to get any money from you anyway. What a pile of bullshit. I sent him to hell, but he doesn't seem to get the memo. The ground swayed under Taichi's feet. It was one thing for his father to harass him, but this? Yeah, he... he has trouble with that. He pulled away a bit, his chest constricting. Why didn't you take the money? You could... you could live much more comfortably then. Hato didn't let him finish and silenced him with a kiss, cupping his cheek when they parted. Because, my dear, our relationship is worth more than a royal palace to me. And I wouldn't be able to live with myself knowing I broke your heart and left you behind like this. Your father can disrespectfully go screw himself with his money. A mischievous smirk tucked on his lips. Or we could squeeze him out of more money and then run away together. What do you say? I... I don't think it's a good idea to cross father like this. I don't want him to hurt you. Shrugging, Hayato pulled him back into the embrace. Okay, then we will stay in our little flat. But at least I'll be able to call you my husband officially. Soon, sweetheart. Very soon. Taichi's heart stuttered with the promise. While there were things that requested his attention more, like his fiancé having a freaking stalker, he couldn't digest the fact he was so scared over a challenge yet again. Of course, he knew love didn't mean it in a bad way. Unfortunately, with everything that was going on, they couldn't really be sure what the stalker was planning. But still, he didn't need to be so blunt about it. Or he at least could tell me it was a challenge afterwards. He never considered himself a spiteful person, but for this time, he supposed he could get at least a little revenge. He was still waiting for Lev to come home from some business meeting, shortening the time by imagining Lev's reaction. Despite everything, he would lie if he said he wasn't worried every time Lev left the relative safety of their apartment. He couldn't understand why the meeting couldn't happen over a computer, but at least Lev had his bodyguard with him, the knowledge keeping Yaku from worrying too much. Still, he was going to be much calmer once Lev came home. He decided to watch some crappy movie in the meantime to forget about time, only relaxing once his phone buzzed with a message from Lev telling him they were heading home. The message lured a smile from him, for more reason than one. He didn't open the chat app fully, leaving the message unread, and continued with the movie, waiting. About ten minutes later, keys rattled in the lock. Yaku quickly stood up and headed to the closest window, looking out and trying to look as anxious as he could. Fingers crossed, let's do this. Mori, great news, I have a new contract. Yaku bit his lip to conceal the proud smile making its way to his face. 
Of course you did. You are amazing after all. That's great. Lev had to recognize the change in his voice as there was a short pause before much softer footsteps sounded behind him. He kept looking out of the window, hugging his middle with his arms. More? Hmm? Is everything all right? Yeah, of course it is. He jerked lightly with his arm when Lev touched his shoulder, letting out a slightly hitched chuckle as he stepped aside. I mean, as much as it can be. From the corner of his eye, he could see Lev furrow his brow in confusion, his hand still hovering in the air. Did... did you just... How did the meeting go? I mean, you got the contract, of course, but some interesting details? Lev stared at him for a moment before he shook his head as if to wake up. Wait, don't change the subject. Why did you... Why did you avoid it, my touch? Yaku tilted his head. When? Just now! Yaku flinched when Lev raised his voice, almost feeling sorry for torturing him like that upon seeing his face freeze completely. Sorry, I... Did I startle you? A bit? He stepped back when Lev tried to touch his arm again. Mori... You still didn't tell me about the meeting. Screw the meeting. What's going on? You are acting strange. Did something happen while I was out? No. I told you everything is fine. Lev clenched his jaw, not from anger, but rather from the starting despair clearly visible on his face. He tried to grab Yaku's hand once again, a pained flash crossing his face when Yaku flinched away. Do... Do you not want me to touch you? I... Did I do something? I'm sorry if I did. I didn't mean it, I swear. Lev. Did I make you mad? Or sad? I swear I'll do everything to make it better, but I don't know what I did. Please, just... Please tell me. I'll do better, I swear. I just... I need to know. Please. Yaku could swear he heard his heart actually crack. Lev's otherwise so handsome face was now scrunched with pain going beyond physical, his eyes hurt and confused and posture uncertain. All because of a few flinches. The silence had to be too long for Lev. He sighed deeply and turned away, but Yaku didn't miss the way his eyes glossed over. Okay, I'll... I'll drop it for now, since... But I swear I'll listen when... when you want to talk. If you want to talk. And then Yaku couldn't continue anymore. He ran to Lev and wrapped his arms around him from behind before he could walk away, burying his face into Lev's back while his own despair bubbled in his chest. Wait, please. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm so sorry, it was just a challenge, I swear. I wanted to get back at you for the one you did with asking about dying, because I was so scared because of a challenge, but I overdid it. I'm so sorry. For a while, everything stopped. Perhaps even their breathing. Yaku at least felt like it, suffocated under the heavy blanket of guilt. Then, Lev let out a long sigh and squeezed Yaku's hands, hanging his head low. Yaku didn't have to be a seer to know what Lev's face looked like at that moment, which just made his heart ache more. I'm sorry. The grip on his hands tightened. Please don't do this to me. I... I was scared that... that something happened to you, or that I did something to you. I know. I'm sorry, it was too much. Finally, he felt Lev relax in his arms. So is... Is everything okay? Yeah, everything is fine. Nothing happened. But I really want to know how that meeting went. A slightly strangled chuckle escaped Lev's lips, but for Yaku, even that little sound was a personal victory. Okay. Should we sit for that? Sure. I'll bring some snacks.
Indechi made his mind almost immediately about not participating in the challenge. He wasn't sure about the others, but as far as he was concerned, he didn't intend to add to Kunime's pain by making him worried. And the last thing he wanted was to make him feel guilty. Guilty Kunime was a self-destructive Kunime, as he learned the hard way from the previous experience. Why can't they think of some nice challenge at least? Do I have to do everything myself? He made a mental note to try figure out some sweet challenge for the future and slowly got up from the bench to continue on his way home from the physiotherapy. The weather that day was incredible, with sun shining and a light breeze cooling his skin. A perfect weather for a walk. Too late he realized he probably should have taken the bus from the train station instead of pushing himself to walk. Even though it wasn't that far from the train to their house, his leg was already burning with pain to the point he had to sit down for a while to catch his breath. He inwardly cursed his bones and joints and continued limping forward on the crutches, praying silently to finally be at home. If only because Kunimi was working remotely that week and he could cuddle him as soon as he arrived. That thought kept him moving despite the pain shooting through his whole leg and into his chest. He was completely out of breath when he finally arrived at their door, standing up just thanks to the crutches and his sheer willpower as his legs buckled under him. With the last strain of his power, he pressed the bell and leaned on the doorway. Never, ever again! It only took a few seconds for the door to open. He all but fell inside, letting out a relieved breath when Kunime steadied him and let him lean on him for additional support. Sorry, love. Kunime clicked his tongue, gently punching his healthy shoulder. You should have called me. I could go get you to the bus. Ah, yeah, see, I thought I could walk a bit today, so I didn't take the bus. Blinking rapidly a few times, Kunime froze in place for a beat, giving him an incredulous look. You what? Are you out of your mind? What if something happened to you along the way? He tightened his grip around Kindaichi's waist, and Kindaichi flinched as the new wave of pain shot through his side. Kunime's face fell, his grip easing immediately. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That wasn't... I didn't want to do that. Did I hurt you? I'm sorry. Feeling Kunime starting panic, Kindaichi pulled him closer and pressed a kiss on his forehead, then two more to make sure his message got across. You didn't. It's fine, I promise. Just... help me sit. Kunime nodded quickly and slowly led him towards the closest chair, helping him settle down. The whole time, his eyes didn't stop darting over Kindaichi, his face and shoulders tensing whenever Kindaichi just about winced. Kindaichi mentally pat himself on the back for ditching the challenge. As if Aki needed more stress in his life. Screw this. Better? Kindaichi flashed him the best smile he could muster and squeezed his hand, bringing it to his lips to leave a kiss on his fingers. Much. Thank you. Kunime visibly relaxed, though he still hesitated when Kindaichi tugged him closer to sit on his thigh, almost jumping back when Kindaichi flinched after he moved in a wrong direction. Kindaichi held him in place, his hands firmly set on Kunime's hips. It's fine, don't worry. I have to worry. I... I don't want to hurt you again. Aki, I told you already that you didn't hurt me. Stop saying things like that. But... No buts. Come sit down, I need my dose of cuddles. Kunime still didn't look too convinced, but then gave in and overly carefully settled back on Kindaichi's healthy tie, only relaxing when Kindaichi pulled him into a hug. That's more like it. I missed you. You've been out for three hours. Yeah, too long. He rejoiced when Kunime chuckled softly, the delicate fingers scratching his undercut sending pleasant shivers down his back. You are so needy sometimes, you know that. But what the heck, you? Why would you strain yourself so much? You should be careful with yourself. 
I know, I know. It was stupid. I just really wanted to take a walk, you know. It feels weird to go everywhere by car or bus when I was walking everything on foot before. He felt Konyemi grip his t-shirt and subconsciously started to rub small circles into his back to calm him down. Yeah, but you weren't after a car crash before. He pulled away a bit, the pain in his eyes and the plea in his voice breaking Kindaichi's heart. Please be careful with yourself. I don't... I don't want to be called to a hospital again because you got hurt. Kindaichi cupped his cheek, melting when Kunimi leaned into the touch. He brought their lips together, if only to hopefully chase away the shadow settling over Kunimi's face. I will. I promised I won't leave you here alone, remember? And I'm going to keep that promise, no matter what. That finally seemed to calm Kunimi down. He hid his face in Kindaichi's shoulder, taking a shaky breath as he clung to the fabric of his t-shirt. Okay, I trust you. Knowing that arguing with Atsumu when he set his mind on something, especially if it was something as stupid as a challenge, was useless, Suna spent most of the morning thinking about how to do the challenge without making Osamu too worried. The easiest way was to not do it at all, since he and Osamu promised each other not to do these kind of challenges. But having Atsumu on his back was something he really didn't need. So the second option was to not go all out and then switch into a full damage control. I wonder if he's upset with Osamu too. Can't imagine why would he let me do a challenge like this on him otherwise. Everything all right? Suna hummed absent-mindedly before he fully returned into reality, nodding in thanks when Washio handed him his water bottle. Yeah, I'm just thinking about something. Something with Osamu? Surprised, Suna raised his eyebrow. How do you know? Washio shrugged and settled next to him on the bench deep creases appearing around his eyes and mouth as he rolled his bottle in his hands. You always get this look when you are thinking about him, and your shoulders are tense, so it's not something pleasant. Since when are you a mentalist? Washio clenched his jaw and Suna mentally kicked himself. Of course he knew since when. He was, surprisingly enough, one of the first who knew what happened between him and Konoha. He sighed and gently nudged Washio's side, hoping to provide at least some support. Hey, it's going to be okay. I'm sure you'll figure it out eventually and everything will be fine again. It's just a little bump on your way to a happy married life. You'll see. A deep sigh left Washio's mouth. Thanks. I hope so. What were you thinking about earlier? Oh, that... Just a challenge again. I was trying to figure out how to go about it to cause the least amount of damage. Though, thinking about it, you actually gave me an idea. I didn't say anything. Doesn't matter. Still thanks. He took a sip from the bottle, slowly putting together a plan. It was stupid, but better than causing his boyfriend pain. Rin! Immediately come here so I can love you. Suna snickered and elegantly moved out of Osamu's reach, earning yet another offended half from his boyfriend. In the end, doing the challenge in his own way was starting to be pretty fun. For the peace of his soul, he did flinch whenever Osamu managed to touch him, but considering how focused Osamu was on catching him to get his welcome kiss, he probably didn't even notice. And Suna was glad for that. You are too slow, my dear. Who would have thought you'll go so much out of shape after just a few years of not playing volleyball? He laughed when Osamu threw him an offended glare and then yelped when strong arms suddenly wrapped around his waist, moving faster than Suna ever experienced. You were saying? Suna's starting protest got cut short by Osamu's lips pressed against his own, turning his words into a pleased hum. He might have lost a battle, but he definitely won in the end. 
I forgot you keep yourself in shape by dragging around bags of rice. It's literally my job, how can you forget that? Hmm, my memory isn't what it used to be, what can I say? Osamu rolled his eyes and kissed him again, pulling him to his chest when they parted. Seriously though, what was this about? I just wanted a kiss and a hug. A soft smile curled Suna's lips up. He leaned into Osamu's arms, enjoying the feeling of safety he always got when Osamu held him. Be it a hug after a successful match, a supportive embrace after a lost one, or just a moment of soft snuggles in their home, he never felt better than in his boyfriend's presence. It was a somewhat surprising development from high school, but Suna wasn't the one to complain. Especially when he got to share his life with someone like Osamu. Sorry, I was just teasing you. You are in a suspiciously playful mood today, don't you think? No, I'm just happy. Can't I be happy? Osamu clicked his tongue, but the font twinkle in his eyes betrayed him. You know I'm never happier than when you are happy. It's just that you aren't really the type to play chase with me. Maybe I should start. It's fun. Rin. Yes, my love? Rolling his eyes, Osamu gently pinched Suna's cheek before pulling him back into his embrace. Suna could about melt there and then, a sudden surge of clinginess taking over him. Everything okay? Suna chuckled. You know, you are already a second person today who asked. That just makes me worried. Are you okay? I am perfectly fine, don't worry. I just like hugging you, you know? Especially after practice. A soft laughter rambled through Osamu's chest, sending pleasant shivers through Suna's skin. If anyone asked him to let go now, he would send them to hell. Oh, by the way, did you happen to do anything to Otsumu? Osamu paused and tilted his head. Mm, I don't think so. I just called him an idiot yesterday when he texted to complain about something stupid Sakusa did. Ah, that explains it. What? Nothing, nothing. It's not important now. Osamu shrugged, apparently content with that answer. They stayed in a hug for what felt like eternity, and yet was cut too short when Suna's stomach grumbled loudly, reminding him he still didn't have lunch. Osamu let out a short laugh before kissing Suna's cheek and tugging on his hand. Let's get you something to eat, hmm? 